back on the Irish market. It's one of the cheapest electric vehicles available in the country. It's got a bigger battery, whole heap of spec inside. It is great fun. It's the Volkswagen E-Up. Let's have a good look around. Brought to you by AA Approved Servicing. Book yours at aa.ie forward slash servicing. It's obviously very recognizable. We've had the up in the Irish market for a long time now. This is the electric version. Got your little blue strip there, the big chunky Volkswagen badge. It brakes quite low, swoops up a little bit here, a little bit easier to cut through the air. And it's quite a short overhang at the front, trying to maximize that space inside. We've got these daytime running lights that wrap around there. They're quite nice. And the lights, now halogen. So they're gonna use a little bit more energy than the LEDs and we would have liked to see that, but you know what, we'll get over it. It's absolutely fine. But overall, I think it's cute as a button from the front, isn't it? Around the side, you start to get a feel for how small or let's say tidy and compact the E-Up is. Only 1.49 meters tall and the length overall 3.6 meters. So quite a small car, great for the city, but you know what, there's enough space inside and I think it looks really good in this white we're on the alloys white color but you get the body colored door handles tinted glass in the back black roof comes as standard and that's kind of reflected in the wing mirrors just there but yeah overall i think it looks pretty neat around the back you see how they've maximized space it's a very sheer drop just there they're not going for a coupe kind of look and losing out on space inside shark fin aerial that's kind of a blend with the antenna as well now I love the fact that it's just one big glass pane as your boot lid just here, your hatch, whatever you want to call it. And I think it looks really well. You get a wiper, don't always get one of those these days, a high up brake light just there. Another thing that I do like is that they've gone for this body colored. Now it is plastic, but a lot of, let's say less expensive cars on the market, they've just got a bit of that cheap kind of black plastic trim. And I think it looks really, really well in these colors. Let's open it up inside and have a look. So we've got 250 liters of space in there, which is small, but in a way more than I was expecting. And it's quite a practical space as well. Parcel shelf just there. And you know, you can get a lot in. There's one of those big shopping crates that I found. We use for the camera gear, easily get that in and out. And you've got an extra bit of space down there where you can stuff your charging cables so you can still access them even with stuff in the boot. Fold down those back seats, 40, 60 split, and you're out to about 920 liters overall. So yeah, for me, it's quite usable. I'm impressed with it. It's a small city car. We're not looking for 2000 liters of space in here. It does a great job with what it is. Let's take the E up out for a little spin. And we've got a 61 kilowatt motor, 83 horsepower as we pull out and floor it, 30, 40, 50. It's got a great pickup. Now don't get me wrong, it isn't the fastest thing on the road. You know, 83 horsepower. So it'll do the 0 to 100 kilometer an hour sprint in 11.9 seconds. So yeah, it's no, no rally car for sure, but it feels so much faster than it actually is. And with that electric drivetrain, you're not trying to build up revs. And you get these kind of smaller petrol engines that are a little bit underpowered. You really have to make them work to get that speed. But in an electric motor, here we are, let's say we're carrying 50 and we're just about to come in to an 80 zone. So if I floor it, 60, 70, 80 speed limit, there we go, back off. And yeah, plenty of pickup and there's no fuss about it, it just goes. And it makes an artificial noise when you're down at you know kind of walking pace pace of a slow cyclist there's an artificial noise and as you accelerate there's this synthesized combustion motor noise that comes through and then that kind of cuts out at 30 or 40 kilometers an hour and you get more of the electric motor whine at that stage but it's quite an immersive experience i'm not normally a fan of, of those synthetic noises but it works in this and it just feels so small and so nimble, so sharp. Yeah, it's great. So this is where we charge up the Volkswagen E-Up. 
and we've got our type 2 at the top just there now that goes up to 7.2 kilowatts on ac so we kind of like that that's pretty good you're looking at you know five to six hours for that complete charge at home overnight or at those on street chargers then take away the next little rubber bong just there for the extra two pins and that's the dc charger so it's ccs connector as pretty much every ev in ireland is now and the news here is it's quite disappointing to be honest now i don't want to be too hard on the e-up it's a small car it's a city car it's not built for cross-country drive so you don't expect it to be a road tripper but at the same time 37 kilowatts peak isn't great and you're only going to get that 37 kilowatts up to about 30 percent state of charge where it will then slowly taper down and by the time you hit 80 percent charge you won't even be getting 20 kilowatt speed it'll be in around 15 or 16. so you're looking at 48 minutes to do that kind of 10 up to 80 percent charge but look let's not be too harsh on the e up it's a city car are you ever really going to be dc charging it probably not so it doesn't really matter yeah let's move on from that Let's talk range and batteries. Hugely important when it comes to our EVs. It's the first question I get out anytime I tell somebody I was driving a car, is it electric? Yeah. What's the range? What's the range? Well, let's go back to basics. It's got a 36.6 kilowatt hour battery, 32.3 of which is usable. So that gives it a WLTP range figure of up to 260 kilometers. Now, as we know, that's not always realistic. It's a little bit optimistic. You can definitely do it. And in fact, I have tracked to beat that and get close to 300 on a couple of trips that I've done in this. But in general, I think if you're looking for a solid real world figure for this car, it's in that kind of 200 to 220 kilometer mark, thereabouts. Put it on the motorway in winter, barreling down at 120. You're gonna see that probably drop to kind of 150 or thereabouts. But yeah, for me, it's a solid kind of 210, 220 car, which is really, really impressive. And even today, I've been kind of having a bit of fun with it. It was parked up, turned on, but not moving for about an hour and a half while I was filming earlier on. And I'm still averaging 13.3 kilowatt hours, which is on track for about 240. So yeah, really impressive. You get the 15 inch blade alloys as standard on the Volkswagen EO, but I think they look pretty good. A little bit more aero, but today we've upgraded. We are on the 16 inch Upsilon alloys. Now they are an upgrade, but it's only 375 euros. And I think they look really, really cool. And for me personally, that's worth the money. Let's have a look around the e -up. We won't spend long on this, but just show you the basics of what's in here before we move on to the functionality. So we've got the leather clad three spoke steering wheel there. It's a few shortcut buttons for controlling your radio, a couple of menus, volume, things like that. Old fashioned key. Got to plug it in and turn it. And silently just turns on like that. It's ready to go. Electric mirrors down here, electric windows, not on the back. They're those ones that, that just pop out. We've got some real kind of traditional dials down the back here, the speedometer in the middle, which is the larger one. Then on the left-hand side, you've got your power gauge showing how much power or regen you're getting. And on the right is your fuel. In this case, the battery level. Now, this is much tidier over here. We're expecting these days, these kind of nine, 10, even 15, 16 inch screens that BYD Atto was in recently rotates to go portrait and landscape. But this is refreshingly simple. <laughs> I really like it. So much of it is actually done through your phone. And it's got this little holder there. So that pops out. That's what claps your phone. And there's actually a little socket just there where you can charge up as well. So let's put that back in for you now put in the USB cable. We take our phone then, pop that in there, clamp down from the top, and I've got that tidy little cable, neat little cable just there. So we can plug that into the end of the phone, charge it up. But also we've got this great app. So if I go to my phone there, and I should have had a better shortcut. There it is there. So maps and more. Volkswagen E up and now my phone this is such a great idea it's just brilliant my phone becomes the control for the car so what do I have well that's loading up there down here it's actually a lot of spec here we've got heated windscreen at the front I've got obviously the heated at the back but I've got heated seats in two stages for passenger and driver automatic AC control it's just yeah, it's got everything that you need there down here below, we've got our volume, radio, media, and stuff like that. We can also get some shortcuts, which then control what's displayed on my phone up here, 
which is just brilliant to get. So I click on that, maps, click on this one here, and it's showing me my consumption, my average consumption, how I'm doing, my blue score. Click on the battery, show my battery level, but then I can go through the icons here to tell me how much regen I'm getting, set timers for when I want to depart, depart or leave. It's just brilliant functionality. And it saves, it cuts down on cost, cuts down probably on efficiency because you're not powering that big screen, makes it a bit cheaper and lighter. It's, I'm just really, really impressed with it, the simplicity of it. Down here we've got our gear selector, kind of traditional style, park, reverse, neutral, D and B. We'll talk about that when we're driving. Different driving modes that I can choose there. We've got a cup holder here, although we can close that and then just give ourselves more space with a little shelf. And a traditional handbrake. Let's talk money for a minute. How much is the E-Up if you're thinking about buying it? Well, the good news is it's pretty much Ireland's cheapest electric vehicle coming in at 27,813 euros. And that includes delivery and related charges. So pretty competitive at that price point. And you get a lot as standard. So there isn't extra trims really. You just get what you get. So you do have two options. One is that you can trade up the wheels. We'll speak about that separately. Then after that, it's paint. And I have the list full here for you. So there's about six colors. It comes as standard for free in teal. Then you can trade up to the non-metallic red or white for 410 euros. Then if you want to go for the metallic silver and gray, 650 extra, and then splash out 805 euros for the metallic red. For me personally, I love it in the white. It's an extra 410 euros, and I think it looks really, really good. This is obviously a very small car, so are we really, really cramped with no space inside? Well, no is the answer. So I have this set up for me just here. Now, to be honest, I actually had a little bit far back, so let's find a comfortable seating position for me. Yeah, it'd be absolutely fine here. And we've got rake on the steering wheel. No reach, but that's absolutely fine. I've got decent head height, so you can put that down or up as much as you want. I tend to keep it on the lowest setting. And at six foot two or 1.89 meters, I still have plenty of space just there. So yeah, great visibility. And the fact that there's no, you know, not much of a, a central tunnel here down the left means it just feels a little bit open and airy. So let's pop in the back and see what it's like there. So a much wider door opening than I was expecting. You can see how close that door frame comes to the C-pillar back here. So yeah, a little bit larger than I was expecting, which is grand for getting in and out. Now, it is a little bit cramped there. I can fit in, you know, if I push myself to the back, but there's not a huge amount of space. But now in fairness, this is two people at six foot two, and I really do tend to put seats farther back than most people. And I think that I could still comfortably drive by shifting my seat forward a couple of inches. So for me, you will definitely get four adults of six foot in here. Are there more comfortable cars for a long distance journey? Yes, but that's not what the e up is. So for me, in terms of the footprint, the size of the car, this is pretty good. Even if I put my head all the way up to the top, I, no, I can't really touch the top either. And yeah, like there's a little tiny bit of storage just there. Now I don't have electric windows. You've got these little pop out things there, but that's fine. Cup holder there. Now it's only a four seater. You don't get anyone in the back. But yeah, this is fine. And I've used this car on school run a couple of times. So I was able to move my seat forward an inch or two, and then there was enough space in the back here for two different baby seats. So yeah, I mean, you'll still run this as, uh, as a family if you need to. Not a huge amount of space in the boot, but it's fine. I wanna just talk about regen braking for a minute because for me, it, it's one of the great benefits of driving an electric car. Once you get used to it and you get back into a combustion engine that doesn't have any regen braking and you, you have to use the brake pedal. It's like, what's going on? <laughs> but with electric car, you don't. So we're coming up to a bend here. Uh, the road that we're on is 80 kilometers. So I'm carrying 70 at the moment. So I'm gonna ease off the brake now. 70, down to 60, down to 50. And I haven't touched the brake at all. So that's regen braking. The car is using the forward motion to slow you down and charge up the battery at the same time. Great little feature. And you can change that around. So you can have this in D mode. So if I take my foot off the accelerator now, it's just coasting. It's holding 60. Now it's down to 55. If I put it to B mode, you feel the regen coming in. And I can toggle by shifting that lever. I can go from level one to two, to three, to four. And it's really slowing me down, 30. 20, 10, and that'll bring you to pretty much walking pace at that stage. It's a great little feature to have. 
and the fact that you can toggle around so easily it's brilliant yeah so that's in d mode put it choose you know whether you're on stage one two three or four and then put it back to b when you just want maximum regen And we're coming up to a little chicane here. So it's gonna be a hard left into hard right and then up a hill drag. So I take my foot off now, it slowed me down to 60 with that heavy regen, and tight, and then switch back the other way. It's stuck to the road. Oh, I just love it. And then release it to that uphill. Oh, and it's just the, the torque, 210 Newton meters of torque. Now this thing will only do the not to 100 in 11.9 seconds, but it feels so much faster. And you go through little chicanes like that and little bends and it, it, it's like a little go-kart just puts a smile on your face and even though you're having so much fun with it you're not going hugely quick it's not a high performance sports car but it just puts a smile on my face I love driving this thing around so compact so tidy then when you want to park it when you want to maneuver it 9.8 meter turning circle fit into any little spot it's just great as we get onto a road here with slightly faster speed limit it's just a good chance to talk about what this thing is like at higher speeds it's not built for it but you know we might just mention it so there's a bit of noise all right yeah so you can just kind of hear the wind whistling over this a pillar here i can feel a little bit of road noise coming down from the the wheel arches so sound insulation isn't isn't great you know we're not expecting it to be anyway at higher speed now one of the great things you've got adaptive cruise control here which is just a great little feature to have in a car that's you know coming in at 27 grand for an electric vehicle and it's still got these features that's really impressive and it's quite easy to use as well it's a little toggle just there you go between on off and then you can cancel and then you go up and down in ones you can set it if you cancel it then you can just reset it and it'll bring you back up to where you were and then you can toggle that distance as well in between you and the car in front so it's a great little feature to have for for those times when you are on the motorway with those kind of journeys yeah it just takes a little bit of the sting out of those longer journeys it's great good feature So time for some concluding thoughts on the Volkswagen E-Up now and over the week that I've had it, driven in all types of circumstances, motorways, school run, and I've just fallen in love with it. It's just so much fun. It puts a smile on my face every time I drive it. Now don't get me wrong, there's cars out there with much better range that charge much faster with better tech inside, maybe a little bit more comfort and style inside. But the job of this car is it's a small electric city car that's good value for money and it does that job absolutely brilliantly. I can't state how impressed I am with it in that kind of a criteria. So yeah, overall, absolutely love it.